Hey, everybody. Welcome to Cafe Grit. I am your host, Beth Ann Campbell. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, if you're on video, I was jazz handsing. I love jazz hands. I think jazz hands are just, I don't know, they're just cool. Why? I don't know. Don't ask me her questions. Anyway, welcome. So happy to be here today. Really excited. I say that every week, but the truth is every time I pick up a microphone, I'm really excited to jump into the topic. And I'm just going to jump right in because um, I have so much to talk about. I'm not, not sure where this is going to go. I'm probably going to ramble all over the place. So, but it's okay. It's about damn time, Lizzo. Um, okay. So uh, today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive a little deep into our psyche and, and reasons why we do negative things, even though we know that they're not good for us. And I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about making like a, a random negative decision. I'm talking about the things we do over and over and over again, seemingly ne negative, seemingly not beneficial to us, choices that we make. And yet we continue to make those bad choices, even though we know th they're not good for us. They're not healthy. They make us feel like shit, whatever. Why do we do that? So I have been actively working on myself, uh, improving my health, mind, body, and spirit in earnest for the past several years. And I say in earnest, my entire life, I have been always every day getting up and today is going to be better. Today, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to make better choices. And I've been working with several coaches. Um, I've read a lot of books and um, read other um, sources online, um, consulted some online folks, talked to friends and family about just understanding myself and how I can be a better person, um, a mind, body, and spirit, how, how I can be healthier. And there are two themes that have been popping up consistently working with different people from different places. And those two themes are number one, this idea of how we deal with emotional pain or discomfort or an adversity, fear. And the other theme is um, understanding this, these negative parts of ourselves or these seemingly negative parts of ourselves that we've struggled with, that we look at as negative, that we've um, we want to get rid of or fix and don't seem to be able to. And, and embracing those parts of us versus ostracizing or wishing them that they would go away. So there's two concepts here. And they're really different themes. I probably could do two different podcasts, but they kind of came together um, recently in a revelation that I, I had about myself and why I do things. So I wanted to maybe talk about them kind of together. So many of us have things about us that we look at as negative. We wish we didn't have them or do them. We try, we pray um, every day, um, wish that we could change those things about ourselves. And these are usually things that we have struggled with, uh, some of us um, for a very long time, like decades. And um, they're things that are, are um, pr I think, pretty obviously on the surface not good for us, like so that we recognize that they're not good, but we do them anyway. So this could be things like smoking. I myself used to be a smoker for 12 years, um, knew it was bad from the day I s picked up a cigarette, but still did it. Uh, drinking to excess, um, eating junk food to excess or, or just relationships with food. And that is definitely my big uh, negative thing that I've, that I've been challenged with that I've been working on for um, a very long time. So food is a big one for a lot of people being overweight, um, making um, unhealthy choices about food, even though we know that um, they're bad or that they're not healthy, not bad's not, not a good word. They're unhealthy. We know that they're not going to make us healthier people. So eating to excess, eating um, junk food, a lot of sugar, et cetera. Uh, some people do drugs. So drugs, obviously not um, healthy. I'm talking about illegal drugs. Uh, we don't exercise or sometimes we exercise to excess. We um, hoard or hang on to things that um, are not good for us or mess up our homes. We um, avoid going out in public sometimes or maybe we party too much. Uh, some people have relationship issues where they're going through 
uh, significant others like popcorn and they never really have any meaningful relationships. Whatever it is, many of us have these parts of ourselves that we look at as negative. We engage in these behaviors that we wish we didn't do, but we seem unable to stop ourselves from, from doing them, or at least it's very difficult to stop ourselves. Um, and I say, we, we say we wish we didn't do it, but, um, and, and I think, I think we probably really believe that, but I don't think as I've learned in my, um, exploration of myself, I don't think that I or anybody engages in any habit um, unhealthy, um, sometimes even abusive behavior towards themselves for that long, for that intensely, years or decades, without getting something, a benefit from that behavior. So somehow, those benef- those uh, those bad habits, even though they we they seem to be bad habits, somehow they serve us. I know this is a really weird concept. We do them because they serve a purpose. So. Um, there is a benefit. And even though it doesn't seem like it, there is some, we're getting something. Sometimes it's a physical thing, right? So sometimes um, the obvious things would be like, like a, a drug hit, right? Or nicotine from cigarettes, even though our reasons for smoking, um, there there are other uh, factors, but there's a definitely a physical uh, uh, benefit, quote, benefit from uh, smoking cigarettes. You, it's nicotine. Um, dopamine hits from eating sugar or junk food, right? So there is a physical benefit. Some of those benefits, though, are psychological. So my thing, as I mentioned earlier, my struggle, my negative, my shadow self, not my term, but we'll call it my shadow self, um, revolves about around being overweight and my relationship with food which has always been a challenge, challenge to eat healthy um, and not um, eat th- things and t- quantities that are are not healthy, even though I know they'll make me feel like shit. So my my core negative negativity is uh, being overweight. And that reflects how I value myself. So it's a factor in most of the emotional pain that I have in my life, the fear, um, the discomfort. And yet it, it has also served me and benefited me greatly over the years. Like, how, but how, how Beth, how is that even possible that this thing that has caused so much emotional pain has served you? How did it, how did I benefit from it so much that subconsciously um, it has deterred me from making permanent changes in my lifestyle? Well, a couple of things have come to mind. And I, I guarantee you, if I do this podcast, a year from now, there will be something additional on here. But the, a couple of things um, have come to mind. Um, one, I've been a, a parent, uh, uh, been aware of for um, some years now. And the second one, literally a few days ago, I had a revelation. So the first thing is, um, how is my weight, being overweight, being chubby, being a pudgy kid, teenager, whatever, how has it benefited me? Well, I learned to focus on being smart and funny when I was young versus getting caught up in boys and the competition um, for boys and being popular. I just I, I just wasn't that person. I was the pudgy, nerdy kid. I read a lot. I did my homework. I got good grades. So, and this is something that I, again, I've been aware of. If you had asked me five years ago, how has your, how has being overweight benefited you? I would have said, I learned to be a smart, funny person um, because that's what I that's the person that I was, and I didn't focus on some of the things that some of my other friends did who were um, thin and pretty and got more attention um, in certain ways than I did. And the second thing is, and again, I just had this revelation a few days ago, being overweight, being chubby, voluptuous, etc., helped me to learn how to move through pain, the emotional pain, through fear and through discomfort and adversity. And that has been so key in the person that I am today. So when I was a kid, very young, I got made fun of a lot for being um, fat, pudgy. This started with my older brother, who um, is deceased, and I love him very much. We he's he very much moved on um, past his seven year old uh, antics. But my older brother, he was two years older than me. 
came home from school one day. I was not yet in school with an encyclopedia of names for his little sister. Names like Bertha, Bertha Butt, uh, Fatty Fatty 2 by 4 Fatso, uh, Big Beth. Uh, and I mean, there were countless more uh, over the years. And, and again, I don't blame my brother. He was like seven years old. This was the 70s. But those words that he came home with that he learned in school were seeds that got planted in my little mind. I was barely more than a toddler. I was four or five And they grew into a belief that I was fat. And the truth is, I wasn't. If I look back at pictures of myself at that age, I was not fat. Uh, But I believed I was. And um, and also uh, kind of underscored at that young age that being fat was somehow bad. It meant that I was um, bad or or worthless or or not valued. Um, I'm sure I looked up uh, to my brother very much at that age. Don't remember it um, much, but... I'm sure I did. And I'm sure, you know, hearing these cr- cruel things from him also impacted me in in my sense of value about myself. And then I became fat. It was the self-fulfilling pro- prophecy. I got pudgy and I was tall and yes, big boned. I'm, I mean, seriously, you're Eastern European calves. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but I was a, I was a big girl and I became pudgy. And then I had to get the clothes. Some of you will um, relate to this. I had to get clothes in the girls section at the department store, Sears. And and at the time, this is back in the 70s, they called the um, the bigger sizes for girls the chubby size. I'm not even joking. The chubby size, right? Thank purple baby Jesus. We are beyond that now um, and have gotten a little bit more woke mostly. But anyway, I can tell you from memory that I remember my mom just very nonchalantly talking on the phone with her friends about her kids in clothes and talking about um, my clothes being in the chubby size. And um, I just, I remember feeling like it, even at like this is, I was probably seven or eight at this time that chubby meant inferior. It meant bad. It was embarrassing. Um, I, there were times where I would get made fun of in front of a lot of people unprovoked with an adult in the room and never once did a teacher or adult or any person of authority come to my defense and say this is not right um so i you know that got instilled in me when i was in junior high um this became an issue um this became uh this came to the forefront in my sense of value about myself when i became very friendly with a boy who rode my bus. He was a year older than me. Every day we sat on the bus and talked and we seemed to get along really well and talk about a lot of things. And, you know, yes, I did kind of have a little crush on him. And then one day, one of my classmates, a mutual friend told me that this boy had said he would go with me, which in that's just early eighties term for date, right? 12 or 13 year old, year old dating. He would go with me. Um, but he would be the laughing stock of the school meaning because I was chubby. Um, so, you know, what did that, what did that ingrain in me that ingrained into me that being fat is, is bad. Um, I struggled with self-esteem in my teen years. I was always wishing I was thinner and prettier and more popular, um, with boys, um, than I, than I really believed I was. And every time, every insult, every underhanded comment, every time somebody said, oh, you'd be so pretty if you just lost weight. Every car that passed me as I was out walking um, in my teens and 20s, trying to lose weight, who would, you know, a car full of boys. And this happened probably, I'm not even kidding, probably eight or nine times in a decade. I don't know what the fuck it is about carfuls of young boys that they are just assholes. But um, I would get yelled at, why don't you lose some weight? Um, whale, um, you're so fat, whale, orca, um, elephant, fat, so big Bertha, um, leftover for my brother, fat slob, fat fucking bitch. Usually this stuff was with zero provocation. And every one of those was pain that I moved through. I didn't let it take me completely down. I didn't let it destroy me. I moved through the fear and through the hurt and through that gut-wrenching feeling of inadequacy, and it made me stronger. My uncle, 
awesome human being has a saying, it doesn't get easy. You just get stronger. Well, fuck you. I got stronger because of that pain, because of working through that fear of being made fun of and the emotional pain of getting made fun of and not being popular with boys. I got stronger. I weathered the teasing from my own family members and focused on being the smart one. I endured the pain of having no fucking adults standing up for me. And I learned to stand up for myself. And um, someday I'll tell the story about how I confronted my high school guidance counselor. And I believe that I only, again, a revelation from um, years and years and years of exploration. I only realized just recently that the reason that I was able to confront my high school guidance counselor about something was because I learned how to be stronger because of that pain. You know, the embarrassment of having my chubby size broadcast all the time, um, I think that has uh, helped me today to be very vocal about stuff that is um, that is unfair, diversity in commerce and that kind of thing. I mean, I cr- the times that I cried through the emotional pain of not being accepted by boys or having some f- fuck wad tell me that um he, say that he would not go out with me because he'd be the laughing stock even basically saying i like her um but i'm i don't want people to make fun of me for dating her that helped me to never settle i vowed at a very young age i was never going to settle for anybody who didn't accept me the way that i am so all of these things that i endured the teasing being made fun of not being um not having people come to my defense um you know, having it having it thrown at me over and over again that you're not valuable um, because you're 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 overweight. All of that stuff I moved through and I became a stronger person and it made me who I am today. And I've asked myself many times over the last couple of years since I started this podcast, what is it about me that makes me so that makes it so easy for me to lean in to to um, speak out to um stick up for people what what is this obsession that i have with rooting for the underdog and and trying to champion for people that don't have a voice or can't find their voice or their voice isn't strong enough where does that come from and i think this is exactly where it came from so the benefit of me being overweight and um pudgy and having to deal with that is that i moved through that pain and the the discomfort and the fear over and over and over again and picked myself back up. And so now it's kind of secondhand. Now, do I still struggle with the food part of it? Yes. But doesn't it make a little bit more sense now why that's so hard? Because for the last how many decades, that has been a way for me to become a stronger person. It's just a weird, weird revelation. I don't, I'm barely able to get my, my mind around it now, but it really seems to be that, um, that, you know, my struggles, uh, my challenges as a, um, an overweight child, teenager, young person, young adult, adult have helped me become a stronger person because I learned as, as unfortunately a lot of people don't learn how to move through the pain and move through the discomfort and move through the fear and become more courageous, more brave, more gritty. Um, And again, I'm not perfect. I still have a lot of things that, that I, that I, um, I do have to work on and I'm not fearless, but I can move through the fear fairly easily. And I believe that, that this is all because of the things that I dealt with as a child. So, you know, if somebody were to ask me, would you go back and change anything? I think the answer is no, because I like who I am today, even though I still am challenged with the choices that I make and my relationship with food. I wouldn't change anything because I like who I am. I like being confident. I like being strong. I like leaning in and speaking out and um, being a voice for people that that can't find theirs yet. I like that part of me. So in, in that respect, I should be probably be thanking um, all of those people who were dicks and jerks and bitches um, when I was a kid because I did, it did become a stronger person because of it. So it's just a really interesting, um, a really interesting uh, kind of a, a combination of this idea of 
your negative self serving you, but also this idea of um, learning to deal with pain and failure, um, which I think is really prevalent today in a, a lot of people's lives, especially younger folks who maybe didn't um, have as many opportunities to uh, stand up, dust off, and move forward. So if you're somebody out there who is struggling, the important thing is not the important thing is not that you make yourself perfect. The important thing is not that you um, learn to figure out everything that you want to change about yourself and you do it successfully. The important thing is, is that you stand up, you dust yourself off, and you move forward through the fear, through the pain, through the discomfort, because it will make you a stronger person. All right, folks. I hope that this was helpful to some folks. I hope I wasn't all over the place. I probably was. But like I said, I uh, this is just something that I've been working on, and um, I do think it's important. I do have a couple of references for you. Number one is, um, most importantly, I have been working most recently with this awesome woman, Karen Chappelle. Look her up on LinkedIn. Um, C-H-A-P-P-E-L-L, Karen Chappelle. She, uh, I started working with Karen last year for some joint pain. So she has a, a great um, drug-free, surgery-free uh, program that helped me go from unable to sleep at night because of chronic hip pain from a fall that I took, well, probably a fall and other things, aging, to um, to a point where I could sleep pain-free pain -free through the night. That relationship with Karen, which was amazing in itself, kind of evolved into, um, she's also does some work on the mind. And that's where we've been working um, to f help me figure out what I'm all about, why I do things, what I want to do and strive and move towards the things that um, are really going to fill my cup uh, now and in the future. Look her up. If you have anything about yourself that you want to explore, learn, improve, uh, look up Karen. She's amazing. Um, there's also a great book out there that talks about this idea of your, I'll call it the shadow self. Again, not my word. Um, this negative side of you and how that serves you, how that should be embraced versus ostracized. And it's called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford. I read this about a decade ago. It's a really great book um, to kind of um, uh, show you how you can look at that part of yourself not as a pariah or not as something that is um you hate about yourself that is that is hateful, but something that you can actually love um and uh and, and embrace. And the third thing is there is a Netflix documentary out there called Stuts. It is by Jonah Hill. It's a documentary and it's about his uh therapist that he's been seeing for a while, uh Phil Stutz. It's an amazing documentary. Go check it out, but then go out and buy um, this book, The Tools by Phil Stutz and Barry Michaels. It's available on Amazon and it kind of goes through some of the techniques that Jonah's therapist, Phil Stutz, had developed. It's really amazing and there there is a great exploration of your um, other self, your shadow self, and how you, you know you can learn to to um, kind of embrace that part of yourself to your benefit. All right, folks, thanks for joining today. And remember, you are a fucking badass. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Take it easy. Hey, everybody. Thank you for stopping by Cafe Grit, where the moxie is fresh, the passion cold brewed, and everything is served with a heaping side of mojo. For more Cafe Grit episodes, please check out bethancampbell.com slash Cafe Grit. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving it a rating or review on YouTube, Buzzsprout, or your favorite streaming platform. I'll be forever grateful, and in return, I'll wish upon you copious amounts of bacon, your favorite hot beverage, and of course, pie. I'd love to connect and hear about your grit experiences as well. Please go to BethAnnCampbell.com for links to all my social media. Cafe Grit is a product of Beth Ann Campbell, LLC, all rights reserved. Thanks again, and remember, you are a badass. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Take it easy.